hello dear students today we are going to critically appreciate one of the poems philosophy written by nizim azikir so before going on to the poetry let's have a brief look on the poet now talking about azikir he was born on 16th of december 1924 and died on 9th of january 2004 He was awarded the Sahitya Akademi Award in 1983, and uh, the award was given for his works Latter Day Psalms. He was also awarded Padma Shri in 1988. And uh, Ezekiel, as we all know, was a Jewish Indian poet, and uh, his uh, writings are uh, very well known. Basically, poems like The Night of the Scorpion or Island, Island, which is an autobiographical poem. and then you have uh, this modernistic approach in his writings so because of this modernistic approach you can see the influence of eliot or writers like yeats and ezra pound in his poetry so he talks about the disillusionment of the modern man or the modernistic approach towards life how the modern situation or the modern man's dilemma is all such themes and then uh, the poem that we have today is philosophy which was first published in the collection of poems the exact name and this poem philosophy although uh, names is uh, philosophy but it uh, diminishes the glory of philosophy and philosophers although in the other sense it tries to establish the supremacy of poetry over philosophy or science and other such works so he tries to say that our senses something which is pleasing your senses something which has got emotional touch that is poetry has got warmth and it is something to be sung of whereas philosophy is something which tries to establish facts tries to find truth but cannot and he says that what cannot be explained do not explain so if you are unable to explain concrete details what a philosopher tries to do uh, tries to talk about the existence uh, of life and the meaning of life and all such things so if you cannot give a concrete answer to it please do not try to do so do not try explaining things which are unexplainable so one cannot explain the will of god so just don't do that so in that way he says that poetry is something which is warmer whereas philosophy is something which is cold and philosophy is something which is trying to find meanings which it cannot finally do so so in order to uh, write something if you are really trying to give your mind a uh, whiff of thought so give that in the form of poems and poetry so without much ado let's start with the poetry itself so we see this is the poem in front of us and there are four stanzas in this poem and each stanza has got five lines each and the rhyme scheme is as we follow you see go flow a a and then cold controlled b b and then again slow is a so the rhyme scheme is a a b b and a now starting with the first stanza there is a place to which i often go not by planning to but by a flow away from all existence to a cold lucidity whose will is uncontrolled here the mills of god are never slow so the poet is talking about a place where he repeatedly keeps on going there is a place where he goes but he eventually goes to that place without any planning how can someone go to a place without any planning because the place that he is talking about is his imagination and you can see that when you are uh, reading something or you are doing any kind of work suddenly it is a brain which is hyperactive and it takes you to your imaginary world without you even knowing it unknowingly you just flow to that place so he says that he flows to that place he goes to that place without any planning away from all existence of course that place which he is talking about is in his thoughts in his imagination so it is away from the existence where there is lucidity which is cold where the will is uncontrolled you cannot control yourself 
and there is no warmth there because it is the thought process which he is talking about philosophy that he is talking about so when there is philosophy when there is reasoning when there are arguments so the warmth uh, general warmth which is associated with feelings is lost and here the mills of god are never slow mills of god means your brain your working mind is never slow here the factory is which god has created the factory is your mind the mind which god has created it is never slow there it is an ever ending process which keeps on whirling your mind keeps on whirling ever endingly so uh, here in this first stanza he talks about his thought process his going to the place where he just uh, goes without his, any control and he keeps on questioning himself um, after going to that place of course uh, there are n number of questions that comes to his mind which are the questions of any philosopher like how this world is created who are we what is the essence of our being and so many n number of questions mind boggling questions that comes to our mind but we don't know the concrete answer to any of it and philosophy is prove that none of them is able to give a concrete answer coming to the second stanza the landscape in its geological prime dissolves to so show its quintessential slime a million stars are blotted out i think of each historic passion as i blink what happened to the sad eye of time so he is talking about the place where he goes to and its geographical location its geological location his landscape that is talking about he says that landscape is full of slime quintessential slime slime what is slime slime is a kind of place which is muddy and quintessential is something which is ideal or classic so he's talking about this time which is quintessential ideal state but full of slime full of kichad as you can call it full of muddy water because however you think how much you think will your mind be able to unravel these questions as what is your existence what is the significance of your existence or how the world was created and any a number of such questions which is associated with the with our existence of with our being all these questions cannot be given and concrete answer so when you cannot give a concrete answer it is all muddy there it is an ideal state of muddiness and a million stars are blotted out stars are associated with light and of course there is darkness a million stars are blotted out a million stars are extinguished why because you cannot give any light to the answers you cannot give any concrete answer that's why there is darkness there is no light i think of each historic passion whatever has gone behind and whatever histo- in the history uh, whatever the philosophers gave or whatever logic they pointed out they are just passions which passed on with a blink of time that is and he is using the metaphor of i for time the sad eye of time because as time passes by it sees all it watches everything but it has no control it cannot uh, hinder anything it can just be there and keep on watching and all the sad time has seen all these philosophers giving their philosophies but none of them were concrete so what remains in the third stanza he says but residues of meaning still remain so what remains is not concrete meaning but remains of meaning residues of meaning as darkest myths meander through the pain so there is pain there is agony of finding out the answers and there are myths and there is darkness that is revolving or meandering around those paths in the pain trying to find towards a final formula of light trying to find a light trying to find uh, answer among the darkness and the darkness is full of myths so all these philosophies are nothing but various myths which has been created but they have no concrete answer and finally they reach towards groping in the darkness they trying to reach towards the final uh, amount of light final formula of light to find the ultimate truth that that would be associated with light and then he says but it it is not possible 
and what he says that i too reject this clarity of sight because this clarity of sight which he is talking about or which the philosophers are talking about or which the scientists are seeking it is unattainable it is not possible so i too reject this clarity of sight which cannot be explained do not explain in one line in one sentence he says all about this poem to all the philosophers to all the scientists that you are not able to explain you will not be able to explain the will of god or what god has done how he has created life what is the meaning of existence and all so if you cannot explain it why take the pains to try to explain it what cannot be explained just do not explain in the fourth stanza he says the mundane language of the senses now here he establishes poetry to the higher pedestal than philosophy and says that what is the language of poetry it is the language of the senses we sing our emotions we sing our senses we sing our feelings in uh, the form of poetry and its own interpretations common things become by virtue of their commonness an argument against their nakedness that dies of cold to find the truth friends so he says that what is most importantly we have to talk about common things sing about common day to day life what the poet does uh, words were talking about daffodils or a solitary reaper so talk about common things talk about uh, the things that is going on around you talk about your senses your feelings that will give you warmth that will bring light because commonness in itself is a virtue trying to find out un- what is uncommon trying to find out the reality of life is a bit hectic is un- un- unattainable uh, cannot be totally done justice to so stop doing that he says that an argument against their nakedness that so this is the argument the poetry is the argument against the nakedness of the philosophers because the philosophers although pose to find an answer to what is truth but they cannot so they die that dies of cold there is no warmth in philosophy but there is warmth in poetry so poetry is warmer poetry is talking about your senses poetry is talking about the warmth that is in life poetry is talking about common things and the virtue of the commonness so poetry is somewhat appealing it gives you life it it gives you a thought process it gives you warmth but unlike philosophy which is mundane which is Uh, although uncommon uh, trying to unravel secrets of the world but it is naked because the truth they try to attain they cannot attain so it dies of the coldness because poet- philosophy is trying to find something which is lacking warmth and that's why it is cold in the starting stanzas also he has talked about how the place is cold to which he goes and find tries to find some reason so that the truth which cannot be found dies at the hands of cold dies a cold death so if you cannot find truth what you can do is you can sing the language of the senses you can sing when there is warmth you can become a poet rather than a philosopher one is keeping poetry at a better pedestal or the upper pedestal on a high place rather than philosophy So that was all about this poetry. I'm sure you all have must understood it. If yes, then please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.